stay there. And they say yeah. And they say there. I'm a city hero, born revolutionary. And come make we defend black supreme. I say me say me step up, born revolutionary. Me chant, go make we fight for black. Jaman, it is a long time now. Them a bust in a slavery, a bust in a slavery. I don't want to see we free, but I know that one day we are be free. Same thing, Malcolm X, tell away. And you have a better future, you have to know your history. You know where you're coming from and know your destiny. How we tired for living a captivity. So, Mr. Hero, all revolutionary. And come make with defend black supreme. As in the step, step up, all revolutionary. Me want to make me fight for black men. I'm a black man, we're well and we're long. We can be well by ourselves as fear, like who's our fashion. From nobody, we not get no help. Please so stop put no boot and buckle on no belt now. I make we defend we well because I'm up to the now. Yes, we We don't get in a baby run up here. Tribulation and brutalization. Me sound, I am a yard demand reparation. Repatriation, make we add forward to rebuild the mama land. Can see us from diversion as if it's hero. Was that deep or what? Did you listen to those lyrics? So now, for that song entitled Gear Up, we're going to take a moment of silence to talk about this song because you'll just enjoy that performance because Mr. Sirius has something serious to tell you about why and how he created this beautiful, meaningful verse. Yes. Um... The reason why I did this song, you know, is to, when I look and see, you know, the situation and the condition my people is, is in today, it, it grieves me, it's very grievous, you know, because I read history and I, and, and I see what's going on. And we have to big up all liberate, liberators, you know, me, who, who present and past liberators, you know, that's why I big up Malcolm X. Marcus Garvey, you know, Paul Bogle, you know. So you, you created this song from just knowing what went on in history and you just came up with these lyrics yourself? Well, yeah, it's my, yeah, it's my meditation and thing. I just think about what's going on, you know, now and nothing changed really, you know, because when we look and see all over the world, poor people is is struggling, especially my people, you know, and I'm not comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I'm I'm kind of waking up my people them, let them know that they're supposed to just gear up, you know, both mentally, economically, you know, spiritually, everywhere, you know, and let's stand up for our equal rights and justice. So what what do you think of the music today, as far as the lyrics and you know the booty shaking and all the other type of styles that's out there 
and your music is based on me. Take a piece of chain, baby, bring that ass, we gotta be 
Sunday they used to come out in the park. Either it was Dice or it was DJ Sam. Sometimes they'd come out at the same time and they had huge equipment, yo. One would be on one side of the park and one would be on the other. So that was um that that was one of you know, also one of the uh, eras that inspired me. You know? Yeah. Okay folks, uh now we're joined by Latin Princess. Hi. Yeah, uh, we talked about the, the young lady, you know, who just married uh Little Theodore and everything, and they, you know, coming to as a power couple. Greece, uh, composer, singer, saxophone extraordinaire, Donald Harrison. How, how you doing, Mr. Harrison? Good to be here, man. All right. That's Keeping good. Keeping everything going. Oh, that's good. That's good, brother. Um, I was wondering, man, um, how, uh, well, uh, first off, what I was also like to say, welcome back to the Big Apple. Good to be back. Oh, that's good. That's good, man. And um, let me ask you, man, how's everything in the Big Easy, especially in the, the Lower Ninth Ward? Lower Ninth Ward is still troubled, so uh, it's going to take a lot longer than we presume. Right. And they're trying, maybe trying to figure out what to do with it, so that's where it is. New Orleans is moving back slowly, but it's getting better. Oh, okay, 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 that's good, that's good. Um, let, let me ask you this too, man, in proximity to the Lower Ninth, lower ninth Ward, rather, I know Little Wayne and Baby and them always talk about the uptown section of New Orleans. Where, how far is that area from there? Well, everything in New Orleans is 15 minutes away. Oh, okay. So you get on the I-10, and it's a 15-minute drive. Oh, okay. So uh, it's not too bad, you know, to get around in New Orleans. Right. It's a, it's a small, small area, but when it's, we have a lot of outer-lying out areas that make it bigger. Oh, okay. Good, that's good. And this little sidebar, man, you know, we have to talk, man. Where, where you shop? Your jazz artist always dress so sharp. You, you gotta let me know where you, where you shop, brother. We gotta talk. I dropped a few sizes. Maybe we can go to the same, uh, you know, men's store to get, get a suit, brother. Um, speaking of our old area, just to let you guys, you folks know too, me and Donald, we, we, we've been neighbors for a long time in, uh, you know, downtown Brooklyn area. Mm -hmm. And speaking of, like, our old area, um, one of the things that a lot of people may not know that you nurtured uh, one of the greats uh, in, the, in the rap game, uh, Notorious B.I.G. Now, um, when okay, when he used to go by, you, you know, your place down there, um, <coughs> out down on St. James, right. it's the St. James place. Um, did you know that Biggie had the potential to to do the music business with what he did? Uh, well, we, <coughs> one of the things that we worked on <coughs> that I thought would give him an edge was diction, okay. rhythm, you know, just basic music stuff that maybe hadn't been approached. And being able to tell stories with the rhymes where you could visualize right. and, and uh, <coughs> listen to a lot of different music okay. and, and adding different elements to it, singing hooks, you know, di different little things. And listen to all music, okay. not just hip hop. Those are just things that I made him aware of, and, and uh, he seemed to incorporate those those elements. Because one thing about Notorious B.I.G. is, is that uh, you can hear every word. So, right. so the, 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 the 
renunciation and addiction was something that he really focused on and, and he captured, he understood, and he really worked on it. His uh, addiction is pristine. And that, that, that makes a, you know, a big difference. I said, man, from a jazz musician's perspective, half of the stuff that I hear on the radio, I don't understand what they're saying. Sure. So if you can get it to, to where everyone can understand what you're saying right away, and you're going to be leagues ahead. So all those things, uh, and then uh, the message that he had uh, to the youth made him into an icon of that ministry. And I'm proud to say that uh, my bass player, this one former bassist, Esperanza Spalding, used to play with me. Oh, okay. She just won uh, Record of the Year from the Grammys, jazz oh. bassist. So okay. some people who look. And another person, Darius Harrison, down in New Orleans, he produced uh, the, the last big, really big rap song, Lollipop for Lil Wayne. So okay. these are all people who were around me, who, who went on to do, who were going on to do great things. So oh, wow. I'm happy to see that this happens. Oh, that's true. Congrats. Congrats. Uh, yeah, definitely the, the great Donald Harrison. Again. <laughs> Um, also, speaking of uh, a time, a period of time in music, man, um, like in the 80s, um, <clears throat> uh, yourself, of course, the, the Marcellus brothers, and Terrence Blanchard. Mm -hmm. Tell me, um, how was that time? Because you, you guys, like, how you say, um, were like, uh, uh, you know, how you say, you were like the, uh, the watershed mark of, let's say, you know, greatness out of that New Orleans area. And, you know, until now, your brothers are still doing your thing. So how, how was it that... How did it feel to grow, grow, grow up with those those brothers, and you know, with accomplishments what you guys did in the in the jazz world from the '80s up until now? Well, I think we're just all trying to uh, play some jazz music. Right. From each of our perspectives. How did it feel, man, um, to be a part of the '80s, uh, you know, movement? Yourself, the Marcellus brothers, uh, Terrence Blanchard, you know, um, you guys, um, how you say, with the standard bearers of that era. And the, and the jazz, you know, the jazz uh, movement out of New Orleans up until now. How did you, you know, feel to be in the '80s and come up with those uh, great jazz artists? Well, it was sort of hard and sort of easy because at the time we came up, there were no young jazz musicians, so right. the industry was very well. The jazz musicians were very excited about us, and there were, you know, also people like Wallace Roney and Kenny Garrett. And, I mean, you know, we had maybe about 20 or 30 young jazz musicians who came to New York at that time. Right. And it was an exciting was an exciting period because the jazz community was really behind us. And they tried to help all of us. And they and there's, there's still to this day a lot of the older musicians who are around are still mentoring people like myself and teaching us, getting us to another level. So we were fortunate that we came along at a time also when there were a lot of great jazz musicians still around. Oh, that's right. And, they, and they, we were able to uh, learn a lot of the things that were here before. So I, I, I feel very fortunate to be around those older musicians in New York who had so many, many lessons for me. Oh, sure, sure. Definitely, definitely. Um, <clears throat> okay, now we're going to bring it up. So now, the 2011, you have uh, you, to support your, your current project, which you're going to be doing tonight, with the great Ron Carter, Billy uh, Cobham, Ham, mm -hmm. and you guys have a trio project, you know, that's out. Tell, tell the folks who don't know the, the title of you, you guys' uh, current project, and, um, you know, what to expect from this, uh, your latest album. Yeah, well, we play uh, cutting edge jazz. You know, Ron Carter and Billy Cobham have been at the forefront of what is considered the highest uh, level of jazz ever in the history of the music. Right. So I'm, I'm lucky to be uh, around those guys and, and play with them and, and learn some of the lessons that, that they have to offer. I'm still learning, so it's, it's a great thing. You know, uh, we always say that jazz is the hardest music in the world, and you can tell that because there's other styles of music they couldn't, uh, well, while we, we love them, they couldn't come and play this music with us because it's so difficult. And you really have to study and study and practice and practice. So it's a calling. 
and we're just trying to keep a, a classic, one of the last classic music in America alive. So this is, classic music is where you take everything around you and try to raise it to the highest level that you can, you know. So that's what the music is about, being the best that you can be and, and, uh, and showing what is the best of humanity, love and peace and togetherness, brotherhood. The jazz music is about the best of humanity. Oh, okay. Yeah, I definitely agree with that, about that. I definitely agree about that. Um, and also speaking of uh, your latest project, uh, what were some like, like some of like the the songs that we should be focusing on? What's like some of your favorites that you collaborated on this, you know, current project? Oh, we're gonna be doing some jazz classics like Olio by Sonny Rollins, and we're doing some Ron Carter originals, some of my originals, and a song we pinned together that has a little bit of a New Orleans flavor to it. Right. So yeah, the, those are some of the things that, and this is our third CD. We did another live CD here called New York Cool. Okay. And the first one was in the studio and it's called Heroes. So this is our third project together. And uh, we can, we'll be playing one song, you know, it was in a movie with Anne Hathaway, Rachel getting married. So, okay, after this, uh, your trio project, because I know you do a lot of different things. We, uh, should we expect any other albums later here in 2011? Any yeah, other projects? Quantum Leap will be coming. Well, it's, okay. it's, it's out, but, uh, It'll really come out sometime in the fall. Okay. So that, that's a record I have with my younger musicians. Okay. So they're mentoring me, the older musicians, and I'm mentoring the younger musicians. And right. That's the way everything gets passed down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's definitely good. And finally, before you go go out, go downstairs and, you know, show the folks here the Blue Note, which you do, again, um, I was wondering, what is your uh, thoughts on, because I know we, we um, me and my partner Dimax always spoke to uh, the rappers and different people about where they see, you know, rap or different things going. Where do you see uh, jazz going as we hear in 2011 and beyond? Where, where, where do you think uh, jazz is going? Well, jazz is growing. It's just, unfortunately, for most of the world, it's an underground music. Right. You know, but we have a lot of fans. In fact, I've done some concerts and played soccer stadiums. We went to... Uh, Morocco and played for 150,000 people. So even though we're not on TV and we're not on the radio, right. we still have a large following because people who know, who love great music and love to see artistry and people who have practiced their instruments and who understand all elements of music, everything, we, these guys that I play with, they understand almost Everything you can understand, know about music, from classical music to jazz to R and B, they know all of it. So they, the people, there's always going to be an audience for people who are amongst the higher echelon. You know, so we just keep doing it, just keep pushing, just keep learning, and keep raising the bar. Oh, okay. Yeah. Appreciate, appreciate that. And uh, you know, thank you for letting me come in and talk to you, brother. Right, before you go, pleasure, man. before I'm you play. Good to see you, man. Thank you, man. Always good to see you. Yeah. And um, just want to let you folks know, you just heard from the, the man himself, Mr. Donald Harrison. And see you next time. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. And they stay there. And they say yeah. This is Dimax, baby, doing what it is that I do each and every week just for you here at the Blue Note with Mr. Donald Harrison, the great jazz artist. So mine is real brief because he said something that just struck me, and it's like, and I saw a lot of underground want to be seen, want to be heard, want to get signed, <clears throat> and it may never happen. So what you just said was real relevant that jazz, as big as it is, is not all over the place like it should be yet. It's lucrative and people love it. So what is the advice you can give to somebody up and coming that wants to be seen, wants to be heard, and somebody could really love their music? Like what, what's, what's that thing that meshes both of those words together? You know, it, everything is hard work. So if you put forth the effort and you work hard and get, a, get some people around you who believe in you, something is going to happen, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Whatever seeds you plant, something's going to grow. Just so, nur nurture those seeds. Just keep working hard. The, the amount of, that you put into whatever you're doing, that's what you're going to get out. So the underground people, <coughs> give yeah. them some advice. Underground people, just get your postcards, get out there, get your street team, get your music out there. Don't ever stop. Just keep pushing and go. If, if they don't want to put you on TV, still call them the biggest people because you never know. You never know who's going to open the door for you. So it's, it's just about one, one person who's opening the door. And you got to be there when it's open. All right. Got to be in it to win it, baby. This is Dimax. Shout out. Thank you. Yo, this is Donald Harrison. And the bomb, you heard me. <laughs> They stay there.